Alright guys, um, I get a lot of questions obviously about speed and how to gain speed and really I think that speed, that word, is, is maybe the incorrect word to use um, because it's really more about control and if you gain control you'll gain speed. So what I like to try to do for, for me personally and for most human beings out there we have a dominant side and a weaker side and knowing what your weakness is for me my weaker side obviously needs improvement and I used to spend a lot of time you know single strokes and double bass and, and all of this stuff trying to gain you know control over what I was trying to do well eventually I realized that the straight notes while that is cool and really the only way to get better at playing double bass is to play double bass the only way to get better at playing blast beats is to play blast beats we know this but in order to gain control and true true control over what we're doing I think that maybe we should try different exercises for this type of thing so recently I've been trying to experiment with playing anything that I can play with my left foot I play with my left foot so meaning that when I go out on a gig or whatever just say for instance I'm, I'm out on a top 40 gig or whatever somebody calls me and says hey our drummer's sick can you come do this gig I'll go do a gig but I'll set up completely left-handed and that allows me to be able to work on being able to play instead of because once you get once you're able to have the control over your weaker limb to execute these types of patterns your speed will go right through the roof and I don't think a lot of guys that are playing fast are really talking about how much control will improve your speed as opposed to just sitting there working on the notes another big factor is endurance um, and a big key factor for me for when I was doing this whole double bass thing was trying to you know obviously play as fast as I could for as long as I could because most everybody I know you can pull every drummer out of the store and ask them to come in here and play double bass and everybody can hit 210, 220 but maybe just for a second so really the issue is not speed it's endurance it's holding the sustain it's keeping it going so for that type of stuff I use a lot of different exercises I'm not going to show you anything in particular but set a time limit on it um, anybody that knows you know a lot of my educational work through online has seen the single stroke exercise the, the, the 30 minute free fall that I that I do and all of that has a set time limit I don't worry about BPM BPM means nothing how long you, you play is going to dictate to you where you go as a player so for me anybody ever seen the right hand left foot left hand right foot exercises between single stroke you know, doing this kind of thing I put a time limit on it and I'll try to do it for 10 minutes let's say so if I know my left foot and my left hand is weak I'll take two of the, two of the you know separate things control and endurance and not worry about speed and BPM it's all about control and endurance so with that in mind these are my two weak limbs so I put a time limit on that do it for 10 minutes you know when you start executing this stuff for for long time periods you're training your muscles faster than you would by playing a bunch of single notes so I found this and especially through my through my students at home it's way more beneficial as far as doing exercises um, to work on time limit for this type of stuff um, another big thing for me as far as that whole thing um, you know is, is to be concentrated enough to actually sit down and work on what you need working on because how many of us say we're gonna go practice I'm gonna go practice honey I'll be back in a little bit and we go to our drum kit and maybe you practice for one two three minutes and then you go ah and you start playing the same thing that you've been playing for the last 10 years you just end up jamming not practicing not saying that jamming doesn't make you better but it's really hard as a human being to say 
I need work on this and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to get it. So that I believe is probably the most important thing for all of this is to know what your weakness is and to set aside X amount of time every day or whenever you can get to the drum kit to work on that. Um, it requires a lot. As a person, it really requires a lot of self-motivation to do something like this. And most of us drummers, we know that. It sucks to go over and struggle through something that you know that you should be playing. Um, and for me, it was always those issues. Lately, I've learned to control my thinking process and my time management, which is another thing. Time management is very important because, again, you get to a situation, I'm going to go practice and you end up doing a couple minutes and you're done. So time, manage is, time management is, is one thing. And any of the great practicers, they all have a really good time management scale. I've never been a practicer. I don't practice. I play a lot, right? I mean, I play hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. I don't practice. I've never been that guy. Um, when I was growing up, as we were talking about earlier, I was too busy playing with people. I was too busy writing songs. I never practiced. Not saying that doing that wasn't practice, but it, it was it's a different thing when you when you think about what it is you need to work on. Tackling that is is very tough. So, you know, forget all the exercises, so to speak, as far as like a new exercise that you can do. Honestly, I believe that if you own the book stick control, if you can play stick control with your hands and with your feet, you're a dangerous drummer. <laughs> It's the only exercises you need are in that book. It's the only thing that you ever need to do to become a technically proficient drummer. The other thing um, that truly makes one a better player, but not just on drums, but a better musician, is to play with people. Play with as many people as you can because, for instance, Every guitar player that I've ever played with, and it doesn't matter if it's in a metal band or some guy calls me to come do a Latin gig and I've never heard the material or a blues gig or whatever it happens to be, I don't stress it because I go in there, I have enough experience playing with people that I know that if I watch the musician's feet, right, every guitar player, every bass player I have ever played with in any style of music, if they're playing and they're going to go into another part, their feet do something. Most guitar players raise their heels just a little bit and drop it to another part. So they're doing their thing, they're singing, you don't know the song, you're just watching and then you notice everybody's feet, like the bass players usually take a step back or a step forward. Guitar players usually kind of bob into a next part. So if you know that, if you can pay attention and watch people, you don't have to know the material. You can watch other people that know the material and get through just fine. And this is stuff that you do not learn in a bedroom on a practice pad. You know what I mean? These are the important things about playing. Um, so don't worry about the exercises part of it. Play with people. Do the exercises that you are doing as long as you can. You know, time limit. Set it up for that. And focus on control. Don't worry about the speed. Those three things right there are going to get you to the place that you want to be as a player, I feel. At least they, you know, and I'm not where I want to be as a player, but I'm getting there. Uh, I'm starting to really understand a little bit more my playing and, and things that are happening with, within my playing myself. So, yeah, that's basically it. I mean, that, those are the three things that I could say focus on the most, and if you focus on those particular things, um, that's going to move you more forward in the direction that you want to go than worrying about what technique is George using for double bass, you know? What about Virgil Renati? What is he doing, you know? None of that matters. Play the drums, <laughs> and and you'll get there. You know, time management. Know what your weaknesses are. Control, endurance, and play with people. That's it.